All right, guys, thanks for uh, for getting on. Uh, sorry to take up your Sunday night of bye week, but um, I wanted to get together and answer any questions you have. Uh, today is a tough day. I really love Sean. He was a tireless worker, very loyal. I just felt like it was at this time the best thing for our program to make a change. And we've done that, and Nunzio is going to be the, uh, the interim offensive coordinator and, and quarterback coach. And we're going to move forward, and we're going to get better. And I chose at this time to do it. It certainly, with the bye week, gives us an opportunity to, to do some things and make some uh, changes and experiment with a few things, and, and that we will do. But... Uh, Without getting into too much detail, I think I needed to do this as the head coach of the team. It's my job uh, to make sure that we're playing complementary football. I feel our football team can win plenty of games when we play complementary football. And as the head coach, that's your job. And when it's not happening, uh, you, you try to fix it. And then at some point, you, you, you may have to make a change, and that's where I felt we were today. So uh, that's how we find ourselves here. So I'll open it up for questions and hopefully try to help. We'll start with Chris Eisman. Greg, I guess just when exactly did you come to this decision? And I guess what was kind of the ultimate deciding factor that, you know, made you realize that, um, that Sean was, was, you know, not going to be the guy to, to lead the offense going forward? Well, you know, I, certain things over time build up, and I gave it a lot of thought, obviously, since the end of the game Friday night. Uh, but, uh, you know, it wasn't as a result of Friday night that this occurred. I really gave it a lot of thought all day Saturday, Saturday night, well into Sunday, and I just felt at this time that was the right thing to do, what we needed to do for our football team. Go to Brian Fonseca. Greg, why why was why did you choose Nunzio to uh, be the interim, and is he a candidate as a per, for the permanent job? You know, at, at the end of the season. Well, he is, he is a candidate, yeah, and he's got a you know a seven week kind of job interview as the coordinator. Um, why Nuns? I think that he is a very talented quarterback coach. The development of our quarterbacks is going to be an integral part of us being successful on offense. Um, and I think he's got a lot of experience at, uh, at running offenses, at coaching quarterbacks. And um, I think he was the man for this time. Bobby Darren. Greg, what's the process for searching for a new coach and how do you balance it uh, with, with still a half a season left to play? Well, you know, I've, I've been doing this a long time. I know a lot of people. Um, my main focus is our football team right now. There'll be time later on if that's the route we have to go. Um, but it's not like you don't have guys already that you always keep on your short list. So that's not an issue. Uh, but right now, my focus is 100% on our football team. Look, I believe we can win games this year. I wouldn't have made this change. Right? I mean, you can do it the traditional way and wait till the end of the season. And, but I believe that we can win games this year if we play complementary football. That's why it happened now. Steve Politti. Hey, Greg. Just uh, from a philosophical standpoint, do you have any plans to change the way you run your offense? And just along those lines, I mean, Gavin was a guy that, excuse me, that Sean recruited specifically. Are you concerned that he uh, might transfer? First question, um, I'm not going to give away too much, right? Because one of the advantages we have is we have a two-week period before we play Indiana and there will be some uncertainty on what we're doing offensively, but I want to have a, a, a multifaceted offense 
that uses tempo as a tool, as a weapon, but not as a constant. Uh, that's kind of where we are headed, uh, but it's a, an execution-based offense that uh, we need to improve our execution right now. As far as Gavin, Sean was the lead recruiter, but you know when you recruit a quarterback, the head coach is extremely involved. Well, in my case, I'm extremely involved with all the recruits, but uh, I feel very good about Gavin, where he is, um, and he's got a bright future at Rutgers. I guess just if I can follow up, it, it, I wonder if if you're more concerned with just the game day operations or if you're concerned with the developmental uh, process of the players overall. I mean, which one of those two is a bigger issue in your mind? Well, I think I think they're both an issue, and I think one feeds to the other. So development of our offense at, you know, at two and a half years in and what you see on game day, you know, those – those two things come together. And at this point, I just felt like we needed to do this. Chris Nowalski. Hey coach, uh, I, I know Nunzio took over as head coach a, co a couple years ago and, and kind of changed, changed the offense then. Uh, you know, what do you remember about, you know, watching Nunzio and, uh, and, and the job he did uh, a couple years ago? You know, I, I don't remember that much. I mean, I've watched some of those games when I first got here to get familiar with the players. Um, but I've, been, I've known Nunzio for 20 years, you know. I know his family. I've followed his career, and I was always very impressed with the job he did running offenses and coaching quarterbacks. You know, he's, he's put a bunch of quarterbacks into Division One football, he has two or three guys that ended up being NFL quarterbacks. So I don't think that uh, – I think it's more of an accumulation of my experiences with nuns over the years that uh, led me to, you know, elevate him to the, to the uh, position. Do a few more here, Chris Eisman. I guess when you look at the totality of the last six games, what do you feel – Feel like has kind of held the offense from performing at the level that you know it might be capable of that's a great question chris um there's there's several things that have occurred that you know we don't have enough hours in in the day to go through all the small errors to all the structural issues that you know you you can get into that you can question yeah you know a lot of times you question things, and after the questioning, you, you realize, you know what, this is the best way. So those are hard Those are hard things. That's a hard question. But I, I think when you watch, at the end of the day in college football, you need to score points, and we just aren't scoring enough points. And I want our offense to be as much of a weapon as our defense is right now. And that's not to, you know, drive any kind of wedge or anything like that. I think we're capable of doing that. And, it, and it's not happening. So I felt like it was my job at this point to, to make the change that I did. Brian? Greg, a lot was made about Sean being the first million dollar coordinator in this program. Uh, is the next coordinator, do you have the same salary range to work with when hiring the next guy? And did that play any effect at all in firing Sean, given that you still owe him the rest of that contract? Look, Rutgers is going to honor uh, Sean's contract as, as, we would all expect. I don't, I have not gone down the road of who right now, as I said to you, my only focus, we're in the middle of a season. And I've never done this in my career. I've never dismissed a coach in the middle of the season. I did it for the reasons that I stated earlier. I believe we can win if we can get that side of the ball cleaned up a little bit. And it's hard. It's hard to do, really hard. I'm not even in the stage of, like I said, I know people, I know guys that I, I like, but right now we're just trying to get our our offense cooking a little bit and get our team better in all phases. We have a bye week to do that, and um, that's all I'm focused on right now. I'll finish up with Steve. Greg, I'm curious what you would say to to the fans about this, and and, and just in general, you've spoken a lot about you know, the program almost being there or not being there yet. You've said a couple of times. And just overall, what would what would would this moment in time 
your message be to the, the, the fans? Well, one of the, you know, my duty as the head coach at Rutgers, first and foremost, is to the players and the staff and the university. But I think the fans are a huge part of my responsibility as the head coach. So uh, I do believe that we've gone from non-competitive to competitive. I do believe that those are the steps that oftentimes you have to take in building a program. Now, I do believe that we can go from competitive to winning and consistently winning. And that's, again, one of the reasons that I made the change now. I believe that we're good enough to win games this year if we can get improve our offense. So to the fans, um, I understand the frustration. I also understand the growth, and you got to see both. There's been growth. There's steps along the way to getting to where we want to get to, and this is one of those steps. And this is a painful step, but it's definitely one of those steps, and uh, we're going to get there. Guys, I appreciate you again uh, getting on Sunday night and doing this, but um, – you know, I'll see you later in the week, I'm sure. All right. Take care.